This video is brought to you by DR Strings. Since 1989, DR Strings has been making handmade round core strings to satisfy the needs of some of the greatest guitar and bass players in the world. Listen and learn more at drstrings.com. Hey, this is Tony Nagy at the famous Grun Guitars in Nashville, Tennessee. And today we will be talking about the function and construction of adjustable truss rods in guitar necks and hopefully be able to teach you how to adjust the truss rod in your instrument. Let's get started. First, let's talk about what a truss rod is. A truss rod is a, an adjustable truss rod, I should say, is a threaded rod inside the guitar neck. And there are a couple of kinds of those. Predominantly, there is what we'll call a single action truss rod. One like this, it's a single rod, and it lays in a curved slot in the neck. And how it functions is that since it's in a curved slot like that, as you tighten it, it actually straightens the rod, which brings it straighter and closer to the strings to accommodate for string tension. The other type of rod is what a double action truss rod and it functions similarly but in both directions. It has two threaded rods working against each other so that you can actually, uh, when you tighten it, it will straighten the neck from being curved like this to being straight, bringing the fingerboard closer to the strings but also if you loosen it, it will actually make the neck go in the other direction. And uh, where that can be important is that if you just have a single action truss rod and say your neck is too straight and it needs to go the other direction, you're kind of done without doing some, uh, some real repair work to make the neck in the proper shape you need for playability. So the dual action, the other action of being able to do that is, uh, you know, is actually just more flexible and uh, creating the proper amount of curve in the neck when the terminology we're going to use for that is relief. That's what we call the amount of curve in the neck in comparison to the straight of our strings. Add some further detail about truss rod construction. There's a, on these, both of these, there's an anchor end on a single action truss rod and the adjustable end. And on different instruments, they're, they're located differently. Say like on a Les Paul, the, uh, the adjustable end is at the headstock right here and the anchor is embedded in the neck on this end, whereas in, say, a vintage uh, Fender Telecaster, the anchor is closer to the headstock and the adjustable part is at the heel of the neck. So we've talked some about construction, a little bit of what it looks like and the difference between some different truss rods. So the question is, what's the point? Well, the point is that your neck needs a, a little bit of relief, that curvature, to accommodate for the vibration of the string. When you strike a string at, you know, as you're playing an instrument, the, uh, the string vibrates in an ellipse, meaning that the center of the string vibrates in a greater distance than the anchored ends of the string. So to accommodate that, so that as you're playing and you're making the notes speak, that it doesn't rattle against the frets in the middle, we, we put a little bit of a curvature in there to just leave a space so the string can vibrate. And of course, that'll where the curve is in different necks is, is different, depending on where it's anchored, how it's constructed, the condition of the neck, you know, what condition the wood is. You know, it's an organic material, so sometimes the neck has weak points and strong points and they're different. That, but the main point is we're gonna create clearance for the string to vibrate. And so what I'm gonna do now is show you how to uh, see how much relief you have and then how to adjust it to have the proper relief for your instrument and your playing style. So how can you tell how much curvature or how much relief your neck has? Well, luckily, built into every instrument, we have a straight edge built in. You just need to be able to use your string and you can tell how much curve it is. And here's how we do it. First, to take your nut out of the equation, um, put your finger on the first fret and then on, depending on your instrument and your how much you can um, 
stretch your hand, then put your thumb, say, on the 15th to 17th fret on, a, on an electric guitar. Then you can kind of bounce the string up and down in the center, and you can actually see the space, especially if you got a, a like it's backlit, you can see the space between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. And that basically is how much curve you have in the neck, or the relief as we called it. And so what we're gonna do, we can test that. I can see in this instrument that there may be, I could probably straighten it a little bit. The amount of relief is different for each playing style, but we have like a, you know, a, a center line you know you know if you if you have a real light touch then uh, you don't need as you can have a flatter neck because your string is not going to vibrate as wide because you're not hitting it as hard and if uh, you know you have a Pete Townsend windmill strike you know what happens then your string is going to be you know it's going to vibrate at its maximum ellipse and you're going to need a little more clearance so it doesn't rattle against the frets in the middle so this one right here usually as a basic starting place we can use let's say it just a, 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 a standard business card, just to get a little clearance. So you can get a, you can see a little bit of a bounce in there. And what we do is this, this one has, I'd say a little too much relief, you know, for a standard electric guitar. So what I'd like to do is most truss rods, 99% will adjust. If you tighten to the right, as you're looking down the neck, whichever direction you're coming from, whichever direction the adjustment is at. If you're looking down the neck, just to right to tighten it and left to, to loosen it. You know, the you know, grade school adage, uh, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey works. So this one has a little too much relief. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust this neck and uh, straighten it up a little bit. So here we are adjusting this Les Paul. Here I am, I'm going to put this wrench on this nut. Here's something very important. No matter what kind of adjustment you have, whether you have a uh, open-ended wrench going onto a nut, or you have a, a hexagonal receptacle that has a he hex wrench that goes into it, you want these to really fit snugly because um, sometimes you'll have to put a little bit of torque on it and you don't want these stripping out in either direction, whether it's a, a female receptacle or a male like this one. It's a, it's a big issue to have a proper tool that's properly sized to uh, adjust your truss rod. And also recognize the fact that different instruments will have a different amount of adjustment depending on uh, like how, how, how far you go, even even a similar model, let's say a Les Paul, one of them will, will have a tremendous amount of adjustment in the neck with just a little bit of movement, while another one will require a lot more. I would just start with say, no more than a, a quarter of a complete turn, and then to see how much movement you got in your neck. Like I knew right then that I had probably twice as much relief as I needed. And so I'll go ahead and put my finger back on here. And I could probably use a little more there. So I, I did about a quarter turn. Well, actually, that's probably more like an eighth of a turn. And another eighth. And that right there, I like that amount of adjustment. There's just a little bit of curve in there. We've got a good string clearance. And, and I'm sure as I play that string right there in playing position, that it will... Um, you know, that, that it'll clear the middle frets. And the other thing to realize is that you actually need to test it in playing position because gravity actually works with you too. Think about it, if you're laying an instrument on a stand like this, it actually is going to be, have a little more curve with the weight of the guitar and gravity working in it. And you really can't tell where it's sitting until you put it in playing position. So here's another, uh, here's another concern as you adjust your truss rod, something to think about. If, um, now, a lot of them are fairly snug. Now, but if you're adjusting your truss rod and you're really torquing it and you can't get any movement on that, chances are you might want to just stop and uh, you know seek out a qualified repairman because um, some things can happen to these. Uh, sometimes the 
On a single action truss rod, like in this Les Paul, it can just be maxed out, like the rod can be straight and you still don't have the neck adjustment you need. At that point, there is, those are issues that need to be uh, tackled by a qualified repairman. And so, again, you know, some of, some of the adjustments, some they can be firm, but you just, just go ahead and gauge it for yourself what you're comfortable with. But if you just really can't get any movement or sometimes if it feels rubbery, like if you push it and it bounces back, chances are there's an issue that, again, needs a, you know, a qualified repair with you to take care of. So one issue as you're adjusting your neck and getting in the proper relief is we have this balancing act between neck adjustment and the height of your bridge or saddle because both of those affect your action. So if you were straighten your neck, you know, you have this curve and you straight it, it brings it closer to your strings and that affects your action. Also, your saddle or your bridge height affects your action as well. So you want to optimize both of those. We want to try and start, if you do a setup in the correct order, you're going to put your neck in uh, the proper shape that you want it in. And then we're going to adjust the, the bridge or saddle after that, because that's the only way that we can not do this little game of going up and down. Because if you adjust the action at the bridge or the saddle, it is going to, uh, and then you adjust your neck, you're going to adjust yourself either uh, too low or too high, considering on which direction you're going. Because So remember, adjust the neck first, get in in a, in a at least close to a median shape that we need it to be in, and then adjust the bridge and the saddle after that. So we've discussed before that truss rods can be anchored at either end of the neck. So we had uh, adjusted that Les Paul, which the adjustment of the neck was actually at the headstock. Now this, in contrast to that, is a fender base that actually has a modern adjustment nut, and it is at the heel, and the way it's designed, we actually have access to it here without having to uh, do anything, you know, heavy lifting. And so I can do the same thing here, righty tighty, lefty loosey, it all still works from this end as well. So now we have another consideration. So although this on a vintage Telecaster, this is a 56 Fender Telecaster, it is anchored at the heel, like that base we adjusted was, but it has a specific consideration in that we will have to actually loosen the neck to reveal more of the truss rod nut to adjust it. So you're gonna have a, this is a little bit more of a lengthy process to get a neck adjusted on some of these vintage instruments. Because what you have to do is you have to loosen the neck adjust your truss rod whichever direction you need, put the neck back on, put it back up to tension, and see where everything is sitting. And you may have to do that a few times back and forth before you really get it dialed. So that's gonna be an, a little bit of an added effort to uh, make the neck on your vintage instruments in, a, in the proper shape that you need for playability. So oddly enough, um, not just vintage instruments, but you know all those custom shop fenders that were constructed like the old instruments, you're going to have to adjust them in similar fashion as well. So just remember that even though you've got a new instrument doesn't mean that you're just, you have uh, new procedures to use. Although it's different to find your truss rod adjustment on an acoustic guitar where the uh, adjustment uh, nut is actually inside the instrument at this end, just realize what Martin has done on this modern acoustic is that there is a hole through this brace right here next to the sound hole and the adjustment nut is behind that and you, and you actually need to have a tool that will go directly back and, uh, and, and fit, through, fit like that so you have access to adjusting your truss rod back and forth like that. Now understand, especially on acoustic manufacturers, there are a lot of different uh, styles and different ways of access to truss rod adjustments. Let's say like um, Larave, I know for sure has, they don't have a hole in the brace beside the sound hole. So you actually need a tool that's curved to go around the brace and then still reach the adjustment nut on the inside. So just understand, you just need to, to be aware of where the adjustment is on the instrument that you own. So listen, adjusting your truss rod on your instrument doesn't have to be a scary deal armed with the right knowledge and the right tools, you can do it, you can take care of it. And uh, you know, when you go through humidity and temperature extremes, sometimes it may become necessary. So for Premier Guitar, this is Tony Navy at Groom Guitars in Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks for watching.